Next clip. A favorite of mine. <laughs> a lot of Americans are still angry and frustrated about this economy. If you look at the numbers, you know employment is growing, banks are beginning to lend again. In a lot of places, housing prices are even beginning to pick up. But too many people do not feel it yet. I had the same thing happen in 1994 and early 95. We could see that the policies were working, that the economy was growing, but most people didn't feel it yet. Thankfully, by 1996, the economy was roaring, everybody felt it, and we were halfway through the longest peacetime expansion in the history of the United States. But, wait, wait. The difference this time is purely in the circumstances. President Obama started with a much weaker economy than I did. Listen to me now. No president, no president, not me, not any of my predecessors, no one could have fully repaired all the damage that he found in just four years. That's good. So what does that clip do? Here the president is saying, look, at that time at the convention, close to two-thirds said things were going on the wrong track. And he's putting in context. Things may be on the wrong track, but you know, I think they're improving. And in fact, in my administration, people thought they were in the wrong track just before they were improving. And in fact, I think from that kind of moment through to, the, to election day, where right track, wrong track was actually 52, 47. It wasn't the 65, 35 that I think you know, it was when, when Romney started out. And a lot of it started there. From that moment until election day, every statistic suddenly looked a little better. Dana, I, would, I would just add one thing that it might be the first time in presidential politics where this incumbent president tries to ride on the coattails of two presidents before. And, I, you know, what he said is what he said. What he didn't talk about was 1999. Um, well, well, it's always good when you can <laughs> have a former president at your convention. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Lessons from Bob Beckel, right? Uh, Benghazi, let's, uh, should we play this one or is it too painful? I also believe the administration was wrong to stand by a statement sympathizing with those who had breached our embassy in Egypt instead of condemning their actions. It's never too early for the United States government to condemn attacks on Americans and to defend our values. The White House distanced itself last night from the statement, saying it wasn't cleared by Washington. And that reflects the mixed signals they're sending to the world. The attacks in Libya and Egypt underscore that the world remains a dangerous place and that American leadership is still sorely needed. In the face of this violence, America cannot shrink from the responsibility to lead. American leadership is necessary to ensure that events in the region don't spin out of control. We cannot hesitate to use our influence in the region to support those who share our values and our interests. So it turns out he's right. So three hours after he made that statement, the White House had pulled back its statement saying that the, Egypt, the embassy in Egypt was wrong. It turns out that almost every single thing, if you plot it on a calendar, the administration's statements compared to the facts that they knew them at the time. He says, this is amazing to me. Like, when I was press secretary, remember the seven U.S. attorneys who were fired, who were political appointees, who you can, when you're a political appointee, you can be fired just for saying boo. Seven U.S. attorneys let go, asked to, let, to, to turn over. It is on the front page of the New York Times every day. Charlie Savage of the Boston Globe, now the New York Times, gets a Pulitzer Prize about that issue, and not a single White House reporter understands what this happened. The, the morning that they arrested the American filmmaker, Egypt Coptic Christian, naturalized American, I thought, what has happened to free speech in America? You know what happened to this guy yesterday? He gets, he gets sentenced to a year in jail for violating parole. It, it is 
it is actually an outrage. It was, it's one of the things that I just cannot believe. I don't care about partisan politics. It was the wrong thing to do to arrest this guy for exercising free, because I wish that President Obama, who had the popularity enough to be able to say to the Middle East, oi, knock it off. I, don't, I know that it's painful for you to see a video like that. I don't agree with it either, but it's no excuse for violence. Um, I think that Susan Rice, uh, when she went out and did five Sunday shows, there's something has happened here. You, you, you don't prepare a cabinet secretary for five Sunday shows with misinformation and have no one know about it. Okay, so something is going on. If the truth will get out eventually, it might be years from now. But in the meantime, this filmmaker who wrote, made a stupid video that had 300 YouTube views before he got arrested is sitting in jail for a, for a year in California. And I think that is just terrible. And where's Hollywood? Where's Gloria Allred? Where's everybody? Where's Jose Baez? He, he defends K Casey Anthony, and not a single person in Hollywood stands up for free speech when it comes to this one. I, mean, I feel very strongly about it. So, <laughs> I'm going to withhold judgment on the merits. As a communications, what happened here was that when you're in the middle of an international event, yeah. it's not the time to make this statement. Though when he made it, the other parts of the international event had not happened. Right. So this is an important lesson for many of our clients who, I guess former clients, although I have some clients, <laughs> uh, who would go out and want to talk right away. And sometimes yeah. you're better off 